school, going to Chamberlain School and back to Cold Creek, back and forth. In the history books, it has uh, President Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves, and oh, he was such a good president, all this and that. But I never knew the history, the true history, where he was going to hang about 400 or more. But it boiled down to 38 plus 2. That's why they have the Dakota riot in the year in December. You remember our ancestors that were hung in Mankato. And they called it the Dakota Uprising. So although I'm not a block holder, I'm duck holder, but we are all connected. So please forgive me if I overstep my bounds here in any, any way. Like I said, I, I don't mean you uh, know it all. So first I'll tell you a little story about how I got connected with one of the Canada tribes, the Bihani Nation Blackfoot Confederacy of uh, Canada. About almost a year ago, you know, just sitting in my office, working, I get a phone call. Guy starts talking about a grizzly bear, he starts talking about a grizzly bear treaty and coming to our nation and to, wants us to sign it. I said, okay, yeah, let's do that. I think nothing of it. So he comes, so we put on a beat for him and uh, have the boys sing a few songs. And I thought that was the end of it. Well, it wasn't the end of it. It was just the beginning of a new journey. We all have our journeys in life. We don't know exactly what they are, but the signs show us. So they called me back up and invited me to go to Calgary, Canada to sign the KXL proclamation and the Grizzly Bear Treaty there too. I said, um, okay, I'll go. You know, hey, why are they calling me? I don't know, that's, you know, that's, that's beyond me, but they did. So I drove to Calgary about a 15, 16 hour drive. Get into Calgary, this one huge city. I didn't know it was Trans Canada headquarters in the United States of Canada. I, I didn't know that was the, the, the capital. So we go to the Glenview, Glenville Museum with the Pihani and the Six of Cup Blackfoot Confederates to do the signing. So we walk in and, and there's security guards all over the place. I'm like, oh man, I'm starting to get sick of my stuff. Like that. What am I getting into? So we have all these cameras and probably all the V outfits in Calgary. So they start telling me a little bit of history about, about the Blackfoot Confederacy and the Great Six Nations that I had no, no clue or, or nothing about that, that I was just learning too. So they were talking about the drum, the big drum we had, the drum over there. They said, well, we carried the hand drum and we got the big drum from the Sioux. So way back when, it's like wow. So before we started the signing, we started, we started uh, playing the drum. And when you stand there and feel the vibrations of that drum and the singing, man, there's no feeling in the world like it. Everything goes away, all the nervousness, all the scare, everything it goes away. And to feel that, it's truly humbling. So that's, that's kind of what happened. So we, we did the signing, the interviews, all, all that stuff. I particularly remember an interview with a reporter. So they, they were really, really biased against she tore me up one side and down the other. Stuff about uh, don't you drive a car, don't you fly a plane, all this, you know. She didn't give me time to speak. So at the end she said, well, you know, what do you got to say? Out of our dreams here, but <laughs> so you know, I'll, I'll always remember stuff like that. So, so it was really interesting after that. We uh went and filmed a documentary called The Remaining the Sacred Loop Between the Blackfoot Confederacy of Canada and the Great Sea Nation. And during that time, up in Canada, I was at Saskatchewan and Fort Walsh, I learned a little bit about the history. How uh, they had Chief Crowfoot up there and down here with City Folk. 
and Chief Crowfoot and City Folk were best friends. I didn't know that. City Folk named his son Crowfoot after Chief Crowfoot of Canada. And when I went to Fort Walsh to, to film there, you could see the Cypress Hills. And you can only imagine that way back at that time, for them to ride all the way from here to Canada is absolutely amazing. Was it a car by horse and walking and, you know, the hardest way possible, all them miles, you know, through the winter, everything. So you can only imagine what, what they've been through. So after we did that, we got to talking again. And so, you know what? Let's have a, a signing with the Great Sioux Nation out the Black Hills to sign the Grizzly Bear Tree, the KXL Proclamation. But let's show our unity, let's, let's stand together and unite. So we started planning this, we came up with the date, the 4th of July. You know, we're, we're busy, we spend lots of money on our kids planning 4th of July, buying fireworks, fireworks. If you really about Testing. If you really think about it, it's not our independence day. It's not our. For, for those of you that are not native here, I'm not trying to offend you. Uh, I'm just trying to let you know where, where I'm coming from. So we called it something different. For our unity day. America can, can celebrate independence, and we can celebrate unity. To show that we do stand together and unite over the things that are happening to us today, the pipeline, standing rock. A few people from standing rock. I love you guys. I really do. You opened my eyes to, to do a lot. I went up there every week, Wednesday to Sunday. I stayed there. I camped there with you guys. I got arrested up there. Me and Russell, Ben Rock, a whole lot of others. It was a time in my life to, to see that. I still got our flag today that I flew up there a whole time ago there from August to December. And it still sounds like a campfire. To come over to those hills coming from uh, Sandy Rock, Cannonball, or coming from Mandan. See the smoke coming over the hills, you can only imagine how, how it was that long ago. So I think you had steel horses. And then you had the horses down there. Horses, you didn't need to corral up and walk around the pool. It was absolutely amazing to open my eyes to a lot more stuff than what just did it because we go from go Every day in our normal day, we don't think about things like that. We just think about our immediate needs. We don't really think about our long term needs. So I'll always remember that, and I'll always thank standing up for that. For showing me who I really am. For showing the world who we are. To stand up, to not sit back. You know, it's, like I said before, it's in our DNA when we feel that going. That's who we are. We were the first people of this continent. The first people in this so-called America. It was ours, it was stolen from us, it was taken. And we paid a heavy price. And we're still paying that heavy price today. When I was handcuffed, me, Russell, and the gentleman back here in the red shirt, nice to see you. Haven't seen you since then. I just now noticed you. So remember when we got on that bus and started to sing? For about 45 minutes, all the way to Mandan. You don't know how proud I felt. But at the same time, I was angry because there was this young National Guard girl that was driving. There's this older cop coming on the bus. And I'm sure you've seen it too. As the bus just started to pull up, you see these guys in the semis pulling in these big cinder blocks to block the roads on us. They were going by high five each other. They were going by, putting their fingers up to the bus driver. 
like, like they just won a war or something. Little did they know they just woke us up. Because they don't want to take the time to understand us. They want to kill everything inside. They want to kill our herd. At that moment, I thought to myself, these are not our laws. These are not our ways. Though our ways were taken from us, our way of life was taken from us, our language was taken from us, we were murdered, beat, murdered, raped. So when somebody says, oh, look at those Indians, why can't they just forget about the past? I'll tell you now, we'll never forget about it. Because those are our ancestors that suffered greatly. So we can live today. So it's up to us to do the same for our children. To stand up and do what you can. Come to these meetings. Take back what you can. Be a leader in your community. Or just be you. Because most of the time we go home and dream. Those dreams will never come true if you don't have them. They will never come to you. But if you stand up and do the right thing, you can go to bed good and sleep at night. Because you know you did something. Each and every one of us plays a role. We all play a role, whether it's teaching language, going to school, being a leader, being on a treaty council, being an elected official, whatever, whatever it is to do, makes a difference. Everything makes a difference. When we stood at Standing Rock, we stood as water protectors, as defenders of the sacred. We stood to protect treaty rights. We stood to protect the Missouri River. Don't think for a second that this grizzly delisting isn't our issue. This is a sacred being in our culture. Our most sacred sites include narratives of this being. Our ancestors cohabited with them. There were more grizzlies in the Black Hills than almost anywhere else until Custer Carpet Thieves Road in 1874. He began the killing. The most famous photo of Custer from Thieves Road is him of him with a grizzly he trophy on it. That photo is symbolic of the theft of the Black Hills. Today, now, Secretary Zinke has removed protections from the grizzly in the greater Yellowstone. The Missouri River is threatened. That area is the headwaters of the western states. The Missouri, Columbia, and Colorado rivers originate in greater Yellowstone. The grizzly's ESA status protected those rivers. Now Zinke has removed those protections. All of the Lakota and Dakota are classified as Associated Tribes of Yellowstone, what they call Greater Yellowstone includes our 1868 treaty lands, the so-called unceded territory. Zinke has done this to satisfy Trump's billionaire extractive industry, friends and backers. It is paid back to the multinationals who bankroll his allies in the White House, or in the House and the Senate. Crow Creek and Standing Rocks are plaintiffs in lawsuit challenging this that will hit the media tomorrow. This, this is kind of a um, way back in July, I believe. But there are more plaintiffs on there now to stop the delisting of the grizzly bear. I am urging the chairman and presidents here from the Great Sioux Nation to join us in that lawsuit and any other nation. To stand united in solidarity, dapple, KXL, and this grizzly delisting are motivated and driven by the same forces. Zinke claimed to have called tribal leaders to give them notice he was going to make the grizzly delisting announcement. We have a lot of tribal leaders here. Well, I put that away because I already read that up in Rapid City. So what's going on here is they are trying to delist the grizzly bear, and they did. They took them off the endangered species list of the greater Yellowstone. So they can trophy them. So who was the head of all that delisting and all that framework? The big companies who want to get rid of the grizzly bear so they can extract their industry. 
And whatever time that we, the Dakota, Lakota, and Dakota, were connected to the grizzly bear. If you think about it, so many years ago, 100,000 grizzly bears roamed this area, just like the buffalo did. We all know what happened to the buffalo, they were wiped out. Now we know what happened to the grizzly bear. They were wiped out and pushed back. Chief Stan Greer of the Economy Nation, Black Lives Matter, told the story. He said, if you watch the grizzly bear, you would never starve. Because what they eat, you can eat also. So that, that, that really sticks with me. Then to understand that we're connected to the grizzly bear, back in July 4th, we had the signing of the Great Sioux Nation and a few other tribes. We had a uh, vice chairman, our vice chief of uh, kind of something similar to NCAI, Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Association, but this is Canada. Vice chairman of 634 tribes, I believe he said. He was there. We had a grand chief from the Mohawk Nation that was there. And he had some pretty interesting words for me. But I'll get to that later. So we had the Grizzly Bear Dance was there at the Bear Bee. You know, then all these things started connecting for me. Bear Bee. Uh, Devil's Tower. We're quiet. You know, we're told stories about how those were made, how those were came to be. The oral history. It's like it all connects, okay? You have the story about how Barry was made out, how uh, Devil Sour was made out. And it has to do with bears. Where did those come from? So now they're trying to destroy our ancestors. They're trying to destroy living things that are connected to us, that we are connected to them. But through all this, it came back to us. It may have been lost for so long, but now it's back. So I gave you a copy of the Grizzly Bear Treaty. I'm sorry it just copied out that way, real small, so you might need a magnifying glass. So what the Pecani Black Book of Federation Nation is still doing is they, came to, they went to Washington, D.C. And they got uh, the ranking member of the Committee on Natural Resources uh, was a Senator Raul or Paul Raul Geraldo. Um, Tom Udall, Bernie Sanders, Cory Booker, Okay. 
place. Mr. Secretary, are federal agencies required to consult with tribal nations before they recommend any course of action that has the potential to affect their tribal rights and interests? C. Yeah, our requirement is interest and consultation. Talking to tribes, some of the consultation has been a website rather than personal. <coughs> Some of the consultation has been more notification rather than consultation. So I think we need to do a lot of work on what consultation really means. And a lot of it is trust. Quite frankly, it's taking interest. And I find myself at the Department of the Interior to be the champion of all things Indian. And I take that responsibility very seriously. Clay. Several tribes, including the Navajo, Osage, or Wallace, Crow, Bihani, and Hopi have indicated that the federal government, in particular, the Fish and Wildlife Service, has abandoned that responsibility and has proposed rules to remove the SA protection for grizzly bears from the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. In a treaty, letters, and resolutions, tribal nations have raised concerns over the science being presented by the service and the irreparable harm of tribal sovereignty, sacred site protections, treaty rights, consultation mandates, and spiritual and religious freedoms. And you discuss your plan to honor the mandatory pre decision and meaningful government to government consultation with the tribes in this matter. CP, I will continue to live up to my obligation. I look forward to it. I try to have a great relationship with the tribes. Me and Montana with the grizzly bears has been an interesting thing in life. It extends beyond the grizzly bear, the buffalo, as well, but then we also making sure we honor cultural and historic rights of hunt with that. But forward to work with the tribes of Congressmen. I repeated seven tribes of Montana. Now I have a lot more, and I know that the tribes of Montana are not monolithic. Wait until you get the tribes across our nation are anything but monolithic. Each of the tribes has their own expectations, culture, opportunity, and challenges. And what I really would like is the Senate to push along my BIA director, which I think the tribes are going to be thrilled with that. But we need some help on leadership and also restructure of BIA. I don't think we're doing a very good job. Certainly, Henry Cobb is better. Working with Congress, I think, is a frank decision. Clay, and you will commit to consult with the affected tribes prior to any delisting announcement. Zinke, I will commit to that. I think it's not only a right, it's a law, but two things is the right thing to do. After you've said all that, next day or two, he comes out with delisting the grizzly bear. But you don't have some world to live in. They never consult with us. They do what they want because it's their lives. We didn't make those laws, they made those laws. So they can break them like they broke the treaty. But they never listened to that. So what the Bikani did is they went a little further. So, okay. So they've been talking about Bernie Sanders, Senator Grobo. October 3rd, we invite each and every one of you to come to Washington, D.C. if you can make it. 115th Congress, first session. They're going to try to introduce the Grizzly Treaty into legislation, into law, in Washington, D.C. 170 tribal nations. Wow. That's what these senators are going to do. So last week, when I was insistent, I was a little hard on Jeannie Holmes. Ah, I love her that. I was a little hard on her because she works for John Thune, Republican. And she stated that Republican has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with it. This government is divided by parties. I don't even think they're human beings anymore. The United States government is tearing itself apart because they're too greedy. That they want to fight each other all the time. So I asked her to ask John Moon if he would sign this to support him. Now, do you think I'll get an answer back? No, I don't. I don't expect to get an answer back. But that goes on. Helps me, got me thinking a little more. If they can do that, what can we do? Can we make up our own treaty, take it around and have a treaty amongst ourselves throughout the whole North America, even beyond that? 
You know, I went to Canada August 4th for the repeat, repatriation of the grizzly bear treaty. They brought it back home. Now, in May, the Bihani gave me their flag to fly in our administration travel. So I took down the United States flag, and our flag, the Bihani flag, has been flying there ever since, to show you. So in August, I took up our flag and then, and they took it around in Grand Entry, and now our flag, the Pro Creek flag, is flying in Canada. You know, I remember that. I so I get to be part of this. So on my way back to Canada, the next day, I get a call. The Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, called up to be nominated. Said he read it online. Positive indication that he will sign. Wow. Now, that got me thinking a little more. And we can do our own treaty with tribal nations. Maybe we can hit up one senator at a time, one congressman at a time, one legislator at a time, one mayor at a time, one governor at a time, one leader at a time. And eventually, we'll have all that power and in here with us. Acknowledging that we all united for, for a better tomorrow. Not destroy this earth. Not destroy the beings that live on it. So I don't know how many tribes signed up to the, uh, to try to save the grizzly bear. We filed on with uh, Frederick, Peebles, and Morgan, who are handing the length of litigation related to the delisting of the grizzly bear under the Endangered Species Act. So there's copies of these in there. Take them back to your tribal council. Ask them. Fight for your ancestors. Fight for our history. Let's bring that back to us. It ain't gonna cost you anything. I can get the lawyer on the phone right now and have to tell you. It's not costing me one thing. Funny story. My friend, who's now my brother, is a tourist guy, a historian, professional photographer. He does tour guides. So he came upon this billionaire, this millionaire. They got to talking. Millionaire, you know, says, well, when he put a ball down, committed to following it all the way through, he said, when. That's exactly what we need to do. But we need your help. We need to be united on this. Because if we don't, how are we going to feel when we're at home saying, oh, I put it there. Oh, I should have been there. When right now, you can't make a difference. You can't stand up. There are things you can do. Let's fight for our grizzly bear. Let's not let them wipe them out the way they wiped out our bubble. So, I learned a little history about the Greater Yellowstone area. So, here's what we plan to do the weekend of September 16th. I don't know if any of you know the uh, the Spirit Riders are appropriate. And they have a few other reservations that they come from. A bunch of young guys who rode up from Standing Rock, old horses, got shot. Uh, one of our boys in the Cold Creek uh, rode be between a cop and a shotgun at a woman and a child, and he got some thousands for it. Valedictorian of his class, about 19, 20 years old. But he didn't care. He was instructed to do that. And he did it. Great, great client from Rosebud, but he's a co creek member. In August, counted coup on the highway patrol up there and stand for Rode his horse in front of him, backed him up, and rode the line. That's what counted coup means. Wow. These young warriors are going to ride the Yellowstone. While they're riding, and 
They're going to take the list of demands to an agent designated by LSD. And we're going to change some names. We need to start doing these things because of our history, our relatives' history, our connection with other tribes and their history. To change these atrocities that happen. The Bikani Nation and the Great Sea Nation allies call for U.S. government to change names in Yellowstone National Park of war criminal who massacred Bikani and other advocates of genocide. On September 16th, the Bikani Nation will join our allies with the Great Sea Nation and other associated tribes of Yellowstone and publicly calling for the names of prominent features of Yellowstone National Park to be changed and for our joint treaty. The Grizzly, a treaty of cooperation, cultural revitalization and restoration to be implemented. In 2017, it is unacceptable for war criminals to celebrate, be celebrated as heroes, as is the day's Yellowstone. This September will mark the 147th anniversary of the 1870 Langford Washburn Dome Yellowstone Expedition that was instrumental in Yellowstone becoming the world's first national park and the mythology that has obscured not merely an inconvenient but atrocious truth. Lieutenant Gustavus Cheney Dome, I'm trying to pronounce that best I can, Second Cavalry who guided that expedition became known as the men who discovered Wonderland. But seven months prior to that, on January 23, 1870, Dome led the massacre of our people at the Bryan's River. I was, first, I was the first and last man in the pagan camp, January 23, 1870, Dome wrote in his 1889 application to become superintendent of Yellowstone National Park. Greatest slaughter of Indians ever made by U.S. troops, he continued. Of the 173 victims, even U.S. authorities, authorities admitted that only 15 were men from fighting age. The rest were elders, women, and children, none older than 12 years old, and many of them in their mother's arms reported to the Indians of the 80s. Not only did Don commit this act of genocide against the Bikani people when he slaughtered every hundred men, he was proud of it. And the U.S. government named a mountain in Yellowstone after him, Mount Don. On September 16th, we will bring international attention to this travesty and remind the world of this atrocity. Where Don Don, the so-called discoverer of Yellowstone's wonderland, participated in genocide, Dr. Ferdinand B. Hayden advocated. Unless they are localized and made to enter upon agricultural and pastoral pursuits, they must ultimately be exterminated. Exterminated, Hayden said of the tribal peoples who were about to be dispossessed by the establishment of Yellowstone National Park. On the basis of Hayden's report from his 1871 expedition, Congress passed and President Grant signed into law the act that established Yellowstone National Park. If extermination is the result of non-compliance, the compulsion is an act of mercy. Hayden rationalized his advocacy for genocide. He was talking about us and the other nations not categorized by the U.S. government as associated tribes with Yellowstone. Shamefully, one of the main features of the Yellowstone National Park still carries his name, Hayden Valley. On September 16th, we will call upon the U.S. Department of the Interior to initiate, to initiate the process of changing the name of Hayden Valley to Buffalo Nation Valley in honor of all of the indigenous peoples who have ancestral connection to the sacred landscape and around them, the Buffalo Nation. We will do so not only in the name of our ancestors who were brutally, brutally mastered by the men who discovered Wonderland, no, but in Solomon, Solomon and remembrance of our great nation allies and people were slaughtered at Wounded. Our Cheyenne and Arapaho kin who endured the uh, Pain of Sand Creek Massacre, and the Shoshone Bandit to suffer tragedy, tragedy on Bear River in 1863. The foundation of Yellowstone National Park was nothing more than an act of imperialism inspired by the manifest destiny. There was never a John Muir. The mountains are calling, and I must go. Moments so, created by, for by modern conservatives. 
was conservation. It was warned that Nathaniel Langford destined to be Yellowstone's first superintendent, and treating Jay Cook, the financier of the Northern Pacific Railroad. As to the economic boom, Yellowstone could be to the railroad. Our Lakota and China allies fought a war to stop that railroad. Nothing has changed. Now it's then. Our sacred land from simply real estate to the government and the military industrial complex. As we see today with the delisting of our sacred relative, the grizzly bear on the same lands. I'm going to borrow a term from the colonizer lexicon. The axis of evil. The axis of evil for us today is Apple, KXL, and the end of the delisting of the sacred grizzly bear. The Missouri River is the lifeblood of the water all stood to protect its standing ground. Now with the grizzly delisted, the very headwaters of the Missouri River are in peril in Greater Yellowstone. The grizzly's ESA status protected the headwaters and all the land, but by delisting the grizzly from the ESA, those protections are gone. Trump is putting his fossil fuels back over the health and well-being of our mother, the earth, and all she nourishes. We will continue to defend the Savior from the march of corporation domination and slavery. Explains Chief Stan Greer, Chief of the Economy Nation. Now, the Secretary of Ziki has removed protections from the grizzly bear to Greater Yellowstone. The Missouri River is definitely a threat. Greater Yellowstone is the headwaters of the Western states. The Missouri, Columbia, and Colorado rivers originate there. The grizzlies, ESA status, protected those rivers. Now, Ziki has removed those protections. All the Lakota and Lakota are classified as. Associated tribes of Yellowstone, what they call Greater Yellowstone today includes some of our 1868 treaty lands. In taking this action, we continue the drive to reinforce and defend our hello treaty rights standing beside our great Sioux nation, Cheyenne and Arapaho allies of the 1851 Fort Laramie Treaty, to which we are all signatories. Standing in solidarity with our allies on the 1868 Fort Laramie, knowing they will do the same for us on the 1855 Lane Wolf Treaty. In the current political atmosphere created by the Trump administration, it is vital that we protect our treaties and the rights and interests of our people on both sides of the border. Our own joint treaty, the Grizzly, the treaty cooperation, cultural revitalization, restoration. Now, the most signed treaty in history with 170 tribal nation signatories is the foundation of the forthcoming act of Congress, a truly historic event for all who contributed and signed it. The spirit of our ancestors and for our future generations will continue to defend our way of life and ensure that the rights of our people today continue to be honored. Please join us in Gardner, Montana on September 16th as we continue this vow. More on Dome, the United Nations connection to Yellowstone and a critical issue surrounding Grizzly Delisting, and it has a retaliation retreat site. A lot of information I knew nothing about up until now. I'm, I'm still taking it all in. You know, here we have the pipeline device, the protecting of our lands. And now way over here in Yellowstone, one of the allegedly <laughs> biggest parts they call Wonderland is where our ancestors. Are buried where they were murdered. But yet nobody knows. Two risks that go there don't know. So we're going to go there and educate them. We're going to educate everybody. This is what happened. There's a lot more history that nobody talks about that nobody knows about. Because people don't want that get back. But it happened. But we're still here. So I got another treaty in here. Well, not a treaty, it's called the uh, Declaration of Opposing Oil Sands and Expansion and Construction of the Keystone XL Pipeline. I'll read the first paragraph. We, the first people, in February 2008, the Kani Nation, the Kanai Blood Nation, and the Sixika Nation of the, uh, I can't spell that, the Black Confederacy were. Party to a resolution that required action on multiple aspects of Carson's development and expansion. The resolution was passed by Treaty Chiefs representing Treaty 6. 
Treaty 7 and Treaty 8, First Nations. Regrettably, the articles of that resolution have yet to be satisfactorily addressed. The Oshenti Shagoi, the constituent tribes of the Great Summation, have been in the vanguard of the resistance to the KXL pipeline that will transport this most toxic form of crude <coughs> across our 1851-1868 Fort Laramie Treaty lands from the tar sands to Steel City, Nebraska, where it will fuse with the existing Keystone pipeline to be carried to Texas to Gulf Coast. The Anupati, the Kura Oyate, the Lindi and the Oahu, the Yahantawan of the Kanji Wakpa Oyate, the Pro Mixing Tribe that fought against the Keystone XL pipeline that continues to contaminate Uchimaka, Grandmother Earth. In April 2016, 18,000 gallons filled from Keystone and traditional. The Ahmad the Koro Oyate territory. Now, by making this declaration, the Ahmadi, the Koro Oyate, joined the six account to reaffirm our collective committed to the responsibilities and vowed upon us since time immemorial as the first people of this land. And you can go on to read the rest of it. But just in my opinion, and in my small 43 years on this earth, and what I went up to this point in time right here, right now, I believe this treaty meeting was meant to happen. All things are timed out at this time. That's what I believe. That's why we're, we're all here to present something to help our people, to save our land, to save our water, to save our education, to save our children. So we were all meant to be here today, so we can share information, get that information out, and stop what is going on. What is going on in this world? The United States is carrying itself apart, as they have for us. But we're trying to stay afloat through all of that. How do we do that? By uniting and standing together and holding meetings like this. Unfortunately, we have high rate governments forced upon us by the government. And we have the treaty council. You know, when I was up in the standing rock, I didn't go around and say, hey, I'm the chairman, you know, listen to me. I try to go through the river. I was just one of the guys up there. That made me feel good. Listening to Steve every day. You know, sitting there, sitting there with my people up there. And here's something I never told anyone. And I'll, I'll carry this for the rest of my life. Most of the people at Standing Rock that got arrested, charges were dropped. They don't have to carry that burden, but I'll carry mine for the day of that because my my charges work out. Because of the position I'm in as, as tribal chairman, I felt I had to make a plea. Because if I did, they were going to nail me hard for it. And in our constitution, if I was, I probably would have had to step down as chairman. And I wasn't going to let them take that away from me. As they tried to take my pride when they arrested me, told me to bend over and spread it. <laughs> Man, I'm still so shocked about that today. I couldn't do that. I stood there and shook my head and said, no, can't do that. So the guy had seen that, he didn't pursue it anymore after that. That, that's but I go to bed at night and sleep and think good about it. You know, the worst part is over. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't have to use PTSD. PTSD to me is a term. And I'll be brutally honest, it's used to 
you know, to say, hey, look, I got a problem. I don't have a problem. I forgave them already. It's hard for those that forgive them already because that's who we are. That's who we're born to be. It's in our DNA, it's our nature. No matter what you did to me, I forgive you. But I'm still here. And I'm not going away. Those charges don't mean nothing to me. But that, that fills me with pride to say, hey, you know, this guy got charged. Chairman of the tribe. Yeah, we got it. I don't care. I got to take that with me from my grave. That's not going to be. They gave me something special that day. They gave me a number that says, hey, you're number 137. It says, hey, look what we did to you. Can they stand back and say that? Honestly and truly, no, they can't. All they can do is high five each other and BS to high heaven. Because they're not truthful. They're not right here like we are. We're right. We did what we felt was right. And I'll always remember standing right there. You know, I got a call from, uh, or no, I met the uh, Grand Chief of the Mohawk Nation. So we got to talking in Madison City on July 4th. He says, you know, why don't you guys, I've always been intrigued with the Sioux Nation, always, I've always wanted to come here. Finally, I'm here, you can see the smile on his face. And this guy was very helpful. He said, you know, why don't you guys ask the federal government or sue them or something to tell them you want a different trustee? Because they're supposed to be a hard trustee to take care of it and follow Call the trees. But he says, it's not taking anything away from the government, their responsibilities to take care of it. Let's shake them up. Tell them we want a different trustee. Somebody that's going to follow the tree, give back what's ours, take care of us. What well, can it hurt? What can it hurt to tell a government we want a different trustee? But we're not letting you off on your obligation. Now this is a great grand chief of the Mohawks that told me this. I'll say, wow. Maybe the answer is right there in front of us. We just don't see it. Because we're too busy fighting all this. We're either fighting the government or we're fighting ourselves. And that's our problem. We're our own worst enemy sometimes. Just because this guy got this and I didn't get that, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hate you forever. You didn't give me 20 bucks or, or just last week by a non-Indian, a non-Indian living on my reservation who was a convicted felon, told me to go back to Uganda. <laughs> I mean, what, what, you know, I couldn't believe my ears when I was we're forced to live in whatever house is available, whether it's run down or not. We're forced to drink what's water is there. We're forced by the state, we're forced by the government. We're forced to have a certain amount of machines. You know, we're dictated to every day in the school system. And it shows every day. What are we teaching our kids? What are we teaching our children? You know, and, and to some of these children out of here, I just want to say one thing. You're walking around with your pants down, you know what that means? That started in prison. It means you're available. So, you know, keep your pants pulled up. That's not who we are. 
Hey, we ride horses, bareback. We don't need saddles. That wasn't us. You know, I, I lived in a Crow Creek district about 14 miles from Fort Thompson. They had a river. <laughs> I had a muddy creek. <laughs> Used to get out of the gray every day. Bitten up by the scales of Orwell. The other kids up in Fort Thompson who were a little bit wildier than me got to swim in a nice muddy river. <laughs> you know, I miss those days. I miss when I was a kid because I didn't have to think about all these problems today. But as a leader, I've learned. Even though I'm young, I've learned a lot. And the best thing I can say is be yourself and do your best. Those who put you down, for whatever reason, have their own problems. Those who are just the bad spirits try to keep you down from being who you are. Make your track what it can be. So I just want to say, you know, there, there's a lot that we can do. Make our own treaties with other tribes. Have a treaty location out in the Black Hills somewhere. A head office. Because we need these guys. They're very knowledgeable. They have a lot of history. Lots and lots of history. We need to listen. We need to work together. We need to keep doing these things we're doing today. We can create more treaties amongst ourselves. Like I said, go, go legislatures, legislatures, senators, senators, get everybody to sign. Put them on the spot. Tell the truth. Can't hide the truth. It's one thing about us, we can stand here and lie to, lie to somebody, oh, oh, I did this, uh, I did that, I did what I did. Then you go home and, and you try to sleep at night and you say, gee, I just lied to that guy. You know? Wow. You can't lie to yourself. You can lie to everybody else, but you can't lie to yourself. That's a hard way to live. Because then you got to create one part and make up for the next part, and so on and so forth. So I try my best to be up front. <laughs> Just be straight. So thank you for inviting me here. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you.